Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, my name's Adam Parks. I'm a hydrologist and hydraulic modeler working for Jacobs in the UK. Um, I'm a, a chartered hydrologist with 14 years experience, uh, mostly uh, delivering uh, flood alleviation and flood risk management schemes across the UK and wider than that. I've been asked to talk to you today about some of the, uh, the tools available in Flood Modeler for hydrological analysis. So just an overview, you've, you've built your hydraulic model, you've, you've spent a lot of time putting in your cross sections, your bridges, your routing units, but to really make use of that model, you need some boundary conditions, you need some flow to go into your model to drive that, that modeling process. And that's where Flood Modeler is, is really great. We've got a wide range of boundary types and systems available built straight into the software, which allow you to easily link up your boundaries, your hydrology to your hydraulic model and run the model all within one place. So the software is flexible. There's a wide range of ways of schematizing the hydrology for different study types and different catchment types. All the hydrology tools are integrated within the software, which brings streamlined approach. So you can undertake your hydrology, build your model, run your model, and then process your results all within Flood Modeler. We have methodologies that cover UK specific applications, global applications, as well as a wide range of specialist hydrological methodologies. And also one of the great things is everything you do in 1D, so all the uh, boundaries produced for a 1D model are applicable to the 2D solvers. So you can easily uh, mix and match between 1D and 2D solvers. So uh, in this presentation, I'll be giving you a quick overview of the boundaries within Flood Modeler, what's available. We'll look in a bit more detail at some of the key hydrological units, the ones that are most used. I'll also show you how to schematize your hydrology, so how Flood Model allows you to adapt your model to match your catchment sch uh, schematization, where the tributaries come in, how flows are distributed. We'll look at event files. These are a, a key aspect of Flood Modeler, giving you uh, the ability to be efficient in your modeling and uh, file systems. We'll also look at how you apply uh, boundaries within a 2D model, within a 2D solver using Flood Modeler. And at the end, we'll have time for some questions. So this is a, a standard flood modeler uh, interface. So I've, I've loaded up a, a, a demo model. So this is the Thames model, which ships with flood modeler. When you install the software, we give you a, a number of demo models to play with. And this is one of them. So you can, you can go and do these exercises afterwards if you uh, choose. So the hydraulic model consists of a number of linked cross sections. So all these little uh, blocks running down the channel are the cross sections representing the the conveyance of the river system. And at the top, we have a an upstream boundary, in this case, a, a flow boundary, so a river boundary. And the bottom end on the right hand side of the screen where my red dot is, you can see there's a, a downstream boundary, in this case, a tidal boundary because the, uh, the model discharges into the sea. So what I want to see is how do we set these up? How do I choose these and what options do I have within Flood Modeler? So first off, where, where are all, all the boundaries? So in Flood Modeler and in the interface uh, under the hydrology tab, there's a, a series of these boundary types we can apply. These are largely the more complex, more involved boundaries like the uh, rainfall runoff boundaries and the generic rainfall runoff boundaries. In addition, under 1D model build, uh, under the boundaries uh, section, there's a, another series of boundaries available to us. Um, down the left-hand side, I've identified some of the key boundaries which we're looking at. So we've got the, uh, the flow time and the head time boundaries. These are uh, QT and HT. So the, the flow time, the QT boundary, is a user-defined flow series over time. So you specify what the flow entering your model is at specific times to produce a hydrograph. And you've got the HT head time boundary where you do the same, but for water levels. And this may be for uh, where your model discharges into the sea or into a lake or any sort of um, water body. Flood Modeler has a, a good range of rainfall runoff boundaries. Uh, we'll talk in more detail about these later, but effectively what these let you do is uh, the user specifies a rainfall uh, in terms of a return period and storm duration, and the software calculates a flow for you. Uh, and there are several of these, these are the RFH ones, the FEH one, and the, the generic rainfall runoff or SES method one, and we'll, we'll talk about those a bit later on. We also have a, a good range of downstream boundaries, so these tidal boundaries, QH boundaries, and normal depth boundaries, which I'll, I'll come on to shortly. Most models, at the very least, require an upstream boundary and a downstream boundary. So if you've got a single uh, reach, a single uh, series of cross sections, or uh, routing units, or, uh, or culverts, you need a, a flow boundary at the top, so that's the flow coming into your model, and a downstream boundary at the bottom, which is the controlling downstream water level. And generally, an upstream boundary would be either a flow time boundary, 
Uh, this may be if you've got some observed data, so you've got some observed flow data you want to put into your hydraulic model or some sort of uh, rainfall runoff boundary. So the, uh, the RFH, the FEH or the SCS boundaries where you want to simulate a given return period event, the one in 100 year flood event. Downstream boundaries really depend on how the model finishes. So what's at the bottom end of your model? So if it finishes, say, in a uh, in the sea, uh, you want to use a, a, some sort of tidal boundary. So you can either define a, a tidal profile using a HT boundary or a, a tidal boundary. We define the harmonics. You can use a, a flow head boundary, a, a QH boundary. These are really useful. So what they do is convert the uh, calculated flow in your hydraulic model at the last cross section into a level. And that may be based on the QH relationship you have uh, from a, a weir, at, say a gauging station, uh, or it may be uh, some other uh, flow head boundary you've, you've, uh, you've derived. Often we use these normal depth boundaries as well. These are effectively continue the hydraulic gradient of your model downstream. So if you're modeling a big river system, so the Thames for instance, but you're only interested in the small section of it, rather than having to model the whole thing down to the sea, you simply model the section you need and you can apply a normal depth boundary at the bottom of your model, which continues the hydraulic grade down beyond your, your model's reach. So let's look how you, how you apply these. So I've gone back to the Thames model as my example. In this case, I've removed the uh, the flow boundary at the top. So at the top of my model, I've got cross sections heading downstream towards the sea and where I've got my, my head time boundary. But I don't have a QT boundary at the top of my model, so I, I need to introduce something. To do this, I simply go to my 1D uh, model build tools. Under hydrographs, I'm going to select a flow time boundary and I choose where I want to put that in my hydraulic model. So spatially, I, I select the location I want to place it and just click. And that will add my boundary into my model. And it's the same with all the other boundaries, whether it be an RFH, uh, or a downstream boundary, a QT boundary, an abstraction, just simply choose the right boundary and choose to click where it goes in your network. The way Flood Modeler knows that that boundary is connected to, uh, to your cross sections is by naming convention. So when I click, I get a pop-up box asking me what do I want to call that boundary and the easiest way to connect it to a cross section is to give it the same uh, name as the first cross section so my first cross section is called 2.1 I'm going to call my boundary 2.1 and when I click OK I get a message pop-up saying that, that that label has already been used and do I want to connect the two together yes I do so I click yes and a little line appears connecting my QT boundary to my first cross section so now they're linked together and I know that model's set up. I now need to put some data into that QT boundary. So if I double click on that boundary, I get the QT interface appear. And this allows me to specify some information. On the right hand side, I've got my, uh, my flow and time information. This is where I specify um, a flow at a given time. So if I put some example data in here, uh, I've got uh, 100 QMAX flow at uh, time step zero, rising to a, a thousand QMAX at 10 hours, and then falling back to a 100 QMAX at 20 hours. So it's a, a trapezoidal hydrograph. If I click the plot button in the bottom right hand corner, I can see what that looks like. And so I can see the rise and the fall of the hydrograph over time. I've got a number of other options available to me in the software as well. So at the top, I've got these uh, data extending options. So my hydrograph inputted only goes out to uh, 20 hours. But if I want to run my simulation for 30, 40, 50 hours, the model needs some sort of boundary data. So by choosing extend and linear, it will take that final value, that 100 QMEX, and extend it out beyond the uh, data inputted to the extent of my simulation. Uh, below that, I can specify uh, the unit of time I'm using. We default to hours normally, and that's usually fine, but Flood Modeler is adaptable. You can have everything from seconds through to years um, or, or lunar, uh, lunar months, if you wish. The flow multiplier box is really useful. So if I want to test my model for um, climate change, for instance, I can put a multiplier in here. So if I want to look at a uh, 20% increase in, uh, in flow, I can simply add in 1.2 in there and all my ordinates will be multiplied by that, that factor. The time offset box allows me to uh, uh, delay the start of my hydrograph. 
So if I want to delay my start of my hydrograph by an hour or two, I can just put a value in there and it will delay the start of that hydrograph by that amount. And this is useful if you're looking at the phasing of different boundaries. So if I've had multiple fluvial boundaries or tidal boundaries. I could look what happens at the phasing by delaying or uh, accelerating the start of my hydrograph. You've also got a minimum flow uh, value box in here. Uh, this is useful if your hydraulic model is most stable with a given minimum flow value. So if it's very stable at say at one QMEC and you don't want the input to drop below that, so you can specify a minimum flow in here and that will override the, uh, the input data. Uh, in this hydraulic model, I've also got a downstream boundary, that, that HT boundary uh, down in the sea. If I double click on that, I get a similar interface box. Uh, in this case, I've specified a constant level. So I've got minus 10 meters for a full 500 hours. So throughout the entire simulation, there'll be no tidal profile at all. The, the system's got a free discharge. If I run that model uh, unsteady, I can look at some results. So using the new plotting tools in, uh, in Flood Modeler, I can choose several cross sections and plot them in one go. And I can see the uh, the stage profiles that resulted. So I've got the blue line, which is the uh, modeled stage profile at the top of my model, moving down to the line at the bottom, which is uh, the stage profile far closer to the tidal outfall. And I can see things that have uh, been modeled as I expect. So at the top of my model, my uh, hydrograph peak is about uh, 11 hours. And as I work through my model, that is delayed due to the travel time of the uh, the flow hydrograph and the level drops with the hydraulic gradient of the hydraulic model. So that all that's all worked perfectly. That was looking at the, the upstream boundary in particular, but if I want to have a look at the, the downstream boundary, same example, but this time I've got a constant flow in my QT boundary at the top, but I'm going to have a, a tidal boundary in my downstream boundary. So I double click on the HT units and I get the interface box. You can see I've put a lot more detail in in the uh, the HT information here. So if I plot that, I've got a, um, a tidal hydrograph. So I've got three cycles of peaks and troughs. If I run the model now, um, I'm going to plot a long section. So I'll choose all the cross sections of my model and plot them. And a nice thing I can do with uh, flood model is I can animate these. So I can, I can see the tidal propagation. So the tide rises at the bottom of the model and that propagates all the way up through my model. And that goes through three cycles of rise and fall. Um, these are easy to generate, so you can you can produce these animations very simply. There's a little record button within Flood Modeler, which allows you to export these uh, these animations. So that was a, a quick overview of how you you set up your boundaries, how you attach them, and we looked at QT and HT boundaries. So the other boundaries we use a lot are the rainfall runoff boundaries. These are boundaries where the the user specifies a uh, some rainfall information, so a, a rarity and a duration and the software calculates a resultant flow which will be discharged into your hydraulic model. Uh, and this is based on, on the, uh, the catchment form, so the catchment characteristics, how big it is, how steep it is, how permeable it is. The most commonly used of these is the, the REFH uh, units, uh, it's a UK-centric unit. Um, and we talked in a lot more detail about this unit in a, in a previous webinar, which, which is uh, available on our, our website if you want to get more information. Really, all you need to know is that the user specifies the catchment descriptors and the rainfall data and the software calculates the flow which comes out of that unit. Uh, looking at how that works, uh, we get our uh, catchment descriptors generally from the uh, CH, Centre for Ecology and Hydrology web service. This is a, a paid for service, so you, you register an account, you choose your site of interest and you click to highlight your, your catchment. Uh, and that generates your catchment descriptors for you. That tells you how big the catchment is, how steep it is, how permeable it is, how much rainfall it receives. And we can export the catchment descriptors as a CSV file using the export tool. That CSV file can then be imported directly into Flood Modeler. So there's a uh, an import catchment descriptors box uh, right in the center of the RFH units, and that's brought in all these catchment descriptors. On the next tab, we can specify our uh, rainfall. This can work either as design rainfall. So in this case, I've specified a storm duration of 25 hours and a flood return period of one in 100 years, 1% 1 AP. Or alternatively, I could have input that information as, as observed rainfall. So if I'm trying to replicate an observed uh, rainfall event, 
I could get uh, observed rainfall data from a gauging station, simply paste that in there and, and use that instead. Flood model gives you full access to all the different um, parameters and settings within the RFH unit. So under the model uh, tab and the options tab, and again, we go into a lot more detail about these in, in the previous hydrology webinar. What we're interested in this one is the results. So if I click on the final tab, I can see the software has, has churned through and it's generating me a, a, a hydrograph for my, my input rainfall. The best way to see this is to click the plot button and I can plot up that data so I can see I've got my uh, rainfall at the top of the plot. This is my hydrograph and that shows the, the generated design rainfall for a one in 100 year, 25 hour storm. And then the red uh, plot below is the resultant hydrograph. That's the flow that's gonna come out of this unit and be introduced to my hydraulic model. Uh, it also shows me the response of both the uh, the instantaneous rain uh, runoff and the base flow components in black and green below. In addition to the RAFH unit, there are some other rainfall runoff units within Flood Modeler. There's the uh, RAFH2 uh, unit, which is uh, the improved version of RAFH, which is uh, links directly into the WHS tool. We've also got the slightly older uh, FEH and FFSR rainfall runoff units. These have largely been superseded by RFH and RFH2, but they still have good uses for reservoir safety situations. If you're looking at the probable maximum flood or the one in 10,000 year uh, flow to go into your reservoir for safety purposes, these are the units you tend to use. We also have the generic rainfall runoff units. Uh, this is often uh, called the, uh, the STS method. So this is a really adaptable tool which uses international uh, methods where the user can specify the different components which make up which make up the rainfall runoff tool, pardon me. And so that can either use the SCS, the Soil Conservation Service methods, or it can use the green ant methods and you can mix and match for the, uh, the, uh, the inputs, the loss model and the routing model. This has been hugely improved in the last few releases of Flood Modeler and there are some uh, further great improvements coming in the next release. We're also looking to add more hydrological units to the software. So, for instance, uh, we're looking at implementing the, the new Irish uh, hydrological uh, units and methodologies in, in coming releases. And if there are methods which you think uh, flood modelers should be having, please let us know about them. We've got uh, feedback uh, forms and uh, methods of contact on our website. So, you've got your, your hydrological units, you've got your RFH or your SES methods, and you want to attach them to your model. In addition to the fairly simplistic uh, approach I showed at the start, the software is flexible enough to allow us to have different ways of connecting our units up. So in this example, I've got um, a, a hydraulic model made up of cross sections moving from the top of the screen down to the bottom. At the top, I've got an RFH unit and at the bottom, in this case, I've got a, uh, a Q, QH unit. If I want to attach an additional uh, inflow, say where I've got a tributary joining my model, I can do so. The easiest way of doing that as a point inflow is to add a junction and I can directly attach another RFH unit onto that. So I've got my inflow at the top and my uh, inflow uh, for a tributary midway through. Another common way of attaching units is to use the lateral inflow tool. So this is where you want to spread your inflow across several cross sections. And this is this is used extensively and is a very useful way of doing it. So rather than attaching your inflow directly to a, a model node, you attach it to a, a, a lateral inflow unit, which then spreads the flow across several cross sections. And the user can define how that's done, but by default, it's done based on the, the reach length between each cross section. You can apply these methods using all the units we've uh, we've looked at so far, as well as some of the more uh, specific ones like the abstract unit the, and the rainfall evaporation and uh, tidal units as well. By using these tools, you can end up with quite complex hydrological schematization, which best matches your study area and the projects you're undertaking. Another great uh, element of Flood Modeler are the event files. These have been in Flood Modeler for many years, but uh, some people uh, are perhaps not fully aware of them. What they let you do is uh, build a network, a, a data file, uh, but then you often want to run that for multiple return periods and multiple scenarios. You don't want to have to have a network for every single return period. That introduces the risk of um, error creeping in and replication problems. So instead, you have one network and you have multiple event files. And the event file, the IED file, contains uh, the hydrological units. They're really easy to use. You simply select the hydrological units in your hydraulic model. 
you can right click on them and choose create event file and then they're saved out as a little sub model this uh, this event model you can then change those uh, event files so you can change the return period the storm duration the tidal uh, interaction and so on and then when you build your simulation, you specify your network and your event file and any uh, boundary data from the event file overwrites the, the network file. These work incredibly well with the new simulation builder. So you, you build your network, uh, you have a big uh, folder full of different event files, different return periods, and the software will automatically create for you all your simulation files, which you can then feed directly into the, uh, into the batch simulator or flood cloud to run your simulations. It makes handling lots of different simulation types a lot easier. Another great thing with event files is they're not limited to hydrology units. You can use them with uh, any unit. So uh, br uh, bridges are a good example. So if you built your network and you want to test different uh, different bridges or different blockages, you have one network file and a series of event files, each with a different blockage percentage, which you can swap in and out of your hydraulic model. As I said at the start, uh, flood modeler is good for swapping between 1D and 2D solvers readily. So when you set Set up your 2D model. Uh, you can you can apply boundaries in a range of different ways. You can either manually define them, so a, a fixed inflow or a fixed uh, discharge. You can use time series data, so you can import CSV files with observed flow or observed level, or you can reference event files. So if you set up your uh, hydrology uh, in in the 1D solver, you can use those event files as inputs into a 2D model. It's incredibly easy to do. You specify the location you want to apply that boundary point the software at the event file and press go and the software will run through. Another advantage of 2D models is the ability to use direct uh, rainfall modeling. So if you're looking at uh, pluvial flooding, if you're looking at urban flooding or looking at natural flood management uh, options, these are very useful. So you can build your 2D model of a, a catchment and that can range from something quite small, so a, a small scale catchment of a, a, a town or a village, all the way up to modeling entire catchments and you can drop rainfall directly on top of it using our tools. The user simply has to um, set up the 2D model, specify the area over which their rainfall is applied and then give the software the rainfall data to apply to the hydraulic model. It's worth noting you can apply both uh, a rainfall, you can apply the input to the model, you can also specify uh, an infiltration. So you can use the green out method to specify an infiltration to the soil. Once you've specified the location your rainfall and infiltration will be applied over, the hydraulic model will be run. Um, it will apply that rainfall and route that flow over land. And eventually you'll end up with a, uh, a flood map. So you'll be able to uh, animate how the, the water flows through your 2D model, where it accumulates and where it's stored. So just to quickly recap what's possible with Flood Modeler from a hydrological perspective. The software allows you to uh, calculate inflows to your model, calculate boundaries uh, using a broad range of methods and it's all built into the software. So it's fully integrated into what you're doing. The software is flexible enough to let you schematize complex hydrological configurations. So it doesn't matter how complex your river network is or what your study demands are, Flood Modeler allows you to cope with them. You can swap your boundaries from 1D to 2D solvers easily. So if you decide you, uh, your 1D model isn't giving you the results you need, it's not uh, providing the outputs you require, you can readily swap to a 2D solver or a, a combination of both. We've set up workflows in the software to make this easier for you. So uh, when you're uh, doing RFH modeling, the workflows are there to step you through importing the catchment descriptors, specifying the rainfall, and then connecting that into your 2D model, running your model, and then post-processing the results all in one platform. And the event file tool allows you to bring uh, simplicity to your modeling. It makes it easier to set up multiple runs, lots of simulations, and make the most of the automation tools built into Flood Modeler. I hope that's given you a, a broad overview of how you can uh, use uh, Flood Modeler in, in hydrology.